vibes from Tuesday night are gone and instead we get to feel whatever it is we're feeling right now sadness disappointment anger but we're here to talk through it with you all thank you all so much for tuning in to a pack therapy edition of the ph next coyotes post game show don't forget to hit that like button subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a five-star review. I'm Leah here with PD. We got Danielle behind the Mac. Craig will be calling in from Mullet shortly. PD, this was not good. Yeah, it was not good. And, and here, here's here's the disappointment, Leah. It is the high that you get after beating the Boston Bruins and all of the good things. And that said, just taking a step forward. And you got to build on that and give you some confidence. All that's gone to shit. It's It's gone. And you you need to beat the Calgary Flames. It's a team behind you in the standings up to that point. It it, it honestly it doesn't matter to beat Boston now. You had to beat the Calgary Flames, and it was so disappointing that this team team came out that flat in a first period where they needed to be buzzing. It, it was just extremely disappointing. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. I don't even know what the excuse it could possibly be. They weren't prepared to play. They didn't play with that same grit and, and intensity that they played with a couple of nights ago, and it's not good enough. And um, unfortunately, they're going to have to go on the road now, three tough games after going one and four at home. Yeah. Um, well, we'll try our best to break it down, but let's get started with the numbers presented by Desert Financial Credit Union, Arizona's number one credit union named by Forbes. The numbers, I mean, the Coyotes ended up out shooting the Flames 35-32 in the end. Coyotes were 0 for 1 on the power play, uh, had a short-handed goal against, actually, that's not reflected in this. Flames 1 for 3 on their power play. Shot attempts, Coyotes had 75. The Flames had 58. If you cover the top where it says 6-2, you might not think this would be a 6-2 final score, PD. Yeah, well, it, when you give up three goals on your first four shots against, you're in trouble. Like I, 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 you, you can't win. And and you look at the shot attempts. This team averages in the fifties, and once in a while you'll get to sixty. That's seventy-five shot attempts. Um, I, I think they just tried a little too hard, too late. It was just the the biggest problem I had is this again is an example of the Coyotes doing it to themselves. They, this didn't have to be a game that was 6-2. And if everybody comes ready to play and when the puck drops, you go, okay, we're going to play straight ahead and, and we're going to play hard, it, you don't lose 6-2. And, and every goal, barring the six, the first five goals, first five, Coyotes had the puck on their stick. The first five. And, and they somehow found a way to turn it over and give the Calgary Flames a break. This, this is a game that, that you have to get Calgary and you have to beat them at home. The, the, this is the advantage of the mullet. This is what the mullet magic is supposed to be about. And you can see by the numbers, yeah, they were good, but they were good too late. Like The game was over 10 minutes in. It was over. We could have yeah. started the show and we could all be in bed by now because clearly they slept through the first period. So why can't I? Like that was that was horrific. I, I'm so disappointed in them, and and I don't know, you know, I, I hate to to look at the goaltender and Veggie, poor Veggie, and his first shot of the game's a breakaway, 20 seconds in, really, uh, on a Clayton Keller turnover, and and we're going to talk later about that. But I, I'm so tired of the turnovers by this team in all three zones. Just tired of it. I I don't know how we you 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 get them to to buckle down and you look at the practice they had before they played Boston it was all battle drills it was all tough it was all competitive and they came out and played competitive I, I guess if you're a coach now you have to have that kind of practice every every practice day because they're not listening and they went right back to the old the old um, ways of turning pucks over and playing soft so it was really disappointing I'm sorry it's probably going to be that kind of show for me tonight a little grumpy. No, it's all it's I think it's warranted. You mentioned the 
the goal 20 seconds in. And I think there, there were good vibes going into this game. You know, Calgary, they're not having the best season ever. Before tonight, they were behind the Coyotes in the standings. Unfortunately for the Coyotes, the Flames leapfrogged over the Coyotes with this one. But, you know, it's 20 seconds. They're in. They're down one nothing. You think, okay, that's tough, but shake it off. Like, you don't have to let this get to you. And then Calgary short, scores shorthanded. And you think, okay, this is something that we've seen this Coyotes team have, a, again, shorthanded goals against a lot this season somehow. They're among the league leaders in that. And that just, you know, washes away your confidence even more. And then a minute 17 later, they score their third goal on four shots, yet they don't pull veggie. Like, that's I didn't understand the decision to not pull veggie after – that and you can say it was his fault or not but either way whether it's his fault or not like you have to do something to change the momentum luckily Lawson Kraus gets a goal in the first period the Coyotes haven't scored a goal in the first period at home since December 7th versus the Flyers and they haven't scored a goal in the first period at all since December 29th in Anaheim it's been a while so you think okay three bad breaks it's 3-1 they can come back from this 3-1. You know, it's historically the the worst lead in hockey. The Coyotes have come back from worse. We were saying it around the office. They've done this before. They've come back. And then 12 seconds after Lawson Krause scores, Calgary scores again. And at that point, you're, you just think, like, what more is there to get? Like, that's how I felt watching it. So you can't even imagine for the players on the ice how it probably felt. Yeah, it... it, it... I think even you go back to the first goal against, and and I'm sure the bench was just deflated. I think after all of the highs that they had uh, two nights ago just disappeared in the first 20 seconds of this game. I I know we talked about the goaltender change, and even when they made the change, they had a little bit of a push, and Ingram was sharp and and made some good saves, but he gives up three. Um, And you look at the goals that he gave up, I don't know what he's supposed to do either. If I'm a a goalie tonight, I'm really frustrated with, with... the the effort tonight and and I know Bear has said in the past and he's defended this team about oh it's not the effort it's the execution I, I'm uh, I don't know man I, I I didn't see a team barring a few guys that were really dug in at least for the first twenty minutes I know you had a little bit of push later and guys are pushing and shoving after the whistle and even when the game's over there well maybe they should just started the game pushing and shoving instead of shoving when it the the, just the game ends I, I just I, but thoroughly disappointed. And and now you, you we were talking playoffs coming into this five game homestand saying they had to get some points and, and that's not good enough. And all the teams that are around them are winning. Seattle's winning. Edmonton's winning. Like it's not good enough. So uh, the frustration is going to be run deep and they were supposed to have tomorrow morning off before they jumped on a plane at one o'clock. I, I would be surprised. I mean, I guess what, 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 what do you gain by throwing them on the ice before you hit to Minnesota? But, but again, it, they responded to the message the other day, so maybe you have to put them back out there and and skate them again. Yeah, I don't know, and that's something we might find out before our show ends. Usually, they email about practice um, while we're still live, so we'll update everybody on that. But PD, I think now might be a good time to take a look at your PD's puck talk that you prepared for tonight. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And let's. Uh, it, it, one of the things I want to talk about is that I'm going to do a deeper dive, I promise, into the high cycle by this top line. And, and I'll explain in the future what the high cycle is and think of a bicycle and a circle going around and around. And you do that with the puck and you pass it around. Everybody skates in a circle. So let's start with the first slide. And this is Keller. Keller has the puck along the wall in the offensive zone down by the hash marks. And if you can look where the Calgary defenders are, they're both below the top of the circle. So when you look at this picture, where is all of the room? All of the room is up top. Mosier and Dursey have all kinds of room. The play that Keller needs to make right now, like right now, is he needs to get the puck to Mosier. He needs to pass the puck to Mosier, who is wide open and has all of that room. So that's going to do one of two things. Either Mosier is going to have all kinds of room. He can walk down and shoot. Or what you want to have happen when you make that pass is the two Calgary defenders that are I have red underneath them, then they come out to cover the defense. And what does that do for Keller? It gives him all kinds of room underneath. And, and that's the play. Pass it up high, get those defenders out, create room underneath. The Keller gets the puck back, and maybe he can cut through the middle and score. But what does Keller do? Go to the next slide. Keller climbs the zone. He climbs up towards the blue line. He brings the pressure up to the blue line. The guys in white follow him up to the blue line. So now Keller, not only he has got nobody to pass it to, he has no room for himself. 
So I'm not sure what this play is or what this accomplishes by bringing traffic up higher into the zone. But that's what Keller does. He's a high-skilled player, and he wants to move around and use his feet instead of using the puck to do the work, which he should have made the pass, and that would have alleviated all of the upcoming mess. So you can see Calgary is now is defending up top. Let's go to the next slide. So now the defensemen have to, they have to go somewhere. They both decide we'll dive down. And diving down means coming from the blue line down into the zone. So both Mosier and Dersey go from the blue line and drive towards the net to be an outlet for Keller. Well, great if, if you can make a play through two players, but Keller can't. He can't make that pass through the traffic that he brought to himself. He brought that problem onto himself. He tries to pass it through the two Calgary defenders. He can't. So go to the next slide. And now he's got a two-on-one he's got to defend. Guess who should defend a two-on-one? Uh, defensemen. And that's why they're defensemen. So Clayton Keller is not the guy you want defending a two-on-one. And this is what happens. Go to the next one. He doesn't keep up with the speed of the player going to the outside. The pass beats him clearly because he's not defending it like a two-on-one. Go to the last one. And then it's a breakaway. And Vamelka has no chance 20 seconds into the game. And the most frustrating part, when you go to the next slide, which is the last slide, I made this after the second period. The first four goals against the Coyotes have the puck on their stick, and they are good players. It's Keller, it's Zucker, it's Dersey, it's Dumba. They all had the puck on their stick, they all turned it over, and they all ended up in the back of the net. That is not good puck management, that's not good leadership, and that's not the way you want your veterans to, be, to perform in a game that's this important. And that was a PD's puck talk. Wow, PD, what a breakdown. Kind of a depressing one, but I think important to recognize what went wrong there and that last slide really <laughs> uh, highlights some issues and I know that um, Jason Zucker was one of the people spoken to post game so we'll get some updates from Craig um, from him because it's interesting there was a conversation in the discord tonight about this is one of those nights where you almost wish there was a captain like somebody to stand up and you know maybe speak to the group or have accountability so it, 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 that's one of the interesting parts about having a leadership by a committee model. Um, and I'm sure you can think about that and argue the other way. I just, you know, presenting what the discord was debating tonight. I found that interesting as well. Um, Clayton but Keller, go ahead. PD. I'm going to say one thing about Zucker. Cause you brought, brought up Zucker coming back in the lineup. And we're going to talk to Zucker. So here, here's my question. And I said this yesterday is with the lines that we saw against the Boston Bruins, you saw four lines, roll four lines. They had a body, a big body on each of the four lines. And what did we say? All of the four lines look good. They all competed. It was a good effort by all of the forwards. What did you do? You changed the lineup. And why did you change the I And I can, I have, I hate to say this, but I do have the receipts. I you said, don't. You said, why don't you have Zucker sit another game? I said another game. You're the one that got suspended. You're the one that made that play. The team won w without you right now. Guess what? Make it a little uncomfortable. You have to earn your way back into the lineup. And, and, and to me, I, 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 it's not like Jason Zucker was leading the team in points coming into this game. Like He's been f fine. He's been a good player, but the team played really well. So it, you're not punishing more. It's like, hey, Look, these guys are playing great. We're, we're going to go with the same lineup that we had against the Boston Bruins. We looked really good. We got to the net quick. We looked heavy. We competed. We're going to keep this lineup. You'll get back in. Don't worry. You're still our guy. You're still our veteran guy. You're getting back in the lineup. It just isn't going to be this next game. That's all. Just wait. Just wait. You can bring him in back in Minnesota. Even if you win this one, bring him back in Minnesota, a team that he played against. That's fine. But 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 you saw the line changes today. But were they better? Did this? Did, were they better? I, I don't know. I thought the Bugstead line again, when they put them back, Michelli, Bugstead, and Kraus, I thought they were good. I thought they competed. I thought Kraus was outstanding. I thought Michelli moved the puck extremely well, and Bugstead got to the net. Bugstead led the, the, led the team with eight shots on goal. Beyond that, hmm, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess it, it's too easy. I mean, okay, you're, you're, you're back in the lineup now just because you're a veteran. You should be there. Yeah. I, and I, I don't know. Yeah. And I, and I don't know. Uh, Shelby in the chat said, I didn't like how Bear kept juggling the lines even during the game. And then <laughs> NCC says, Dad's trip equals auto lose. And that is that seems to be true. I bet you there's some stats there where uh, when they're on the Dad's trip, the, the visiting team is on the Dad's trip. The Coyotes haven't had success. We saw that with the, the excuse me, Winnipeg Jets dads in town as well. Um, in the second period, 
you thought maybe there was still a chance Clayton Keller scores his 15th of the season on a great play between him and Logan Cooley. Unfortunately, the Logan Cooley getting a point at home and the Coyotes winning streak is broken. It's now 7-1 when Logan Cooley gets a point at home and the Coyotes winning or losing. Um, And then you get to the third period and Calgary scores 57 seconds in. And at that point, it's over. They score again later on the power play and the Coyotes did have a great surge in the final few minutes there I felt like that that the final three that like three minute mark they they had a lot of offensive zone time and almost looked like they were on a power play five on five and you look at that and think okay well where was this the rest of the game um not a ton of bright spots we still have a dog in him because you know you got to find the right spots somewhere have to (laughs) <laughs> we I almost made it like the dogs that were outside of mullet for adoption earlier like that was something I considered um but we'll give it to a guy who who came in this game who had a great game last game um he only allowed two goals against in relief of Karel Vamelka so Connor Ingram he has that desert dog in him with 18 saves tonight I thought he looked steady and I think it also brings up another question with Connor Ingram being stellar against Boston why would you not go with Connor Ingram again? I know that's something we'll talk more about with Craig as well. But um, Connor Ingram, he honestly was probably the only player worthy of the dogs tonight, PD. Yeah, and, and even that, like he 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 was good, and he made some big saves. But but usually the dog in him excels and, and does extraordinary things. And I'm not I'm not even sure. Ingy can look back at this one and said that was amazing. And and, and he gave up three, but. I don't. I, I don't know. They gave up three, or did he give up two? He gave up two. Okay, never mind. He's the dog. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. Like, I'm so frustrated. It's fine. Just give it to him. <sighs> Yeah, that's that's the big mood tonight. That's really the big yeah, it mood is. tonight. It's the mood. The PD side counter should be back tonight. This yeah, kind of has those vibes of last season, doesn't it? It kind of does. I know. This has been a t- I mean, going one and four in this homestand is not good. But let's let's this has been too depressing, so let's be cheerful for just a moment. Um Discord was the place to be tonight, as Shelby mentions that mentioned the dogs in discord made my night. By the end of this game, everybody was sending photos of their dogs, their pets the pillows on their couch, the stuffed animals on their couch, um, because that's where it got. But it was ultimate pack therapy in the Discord tonight. So again, if you want to be part of that, become a diehard right now. Go phnext.com slash diehard. Um, But one of the highlights for me was Vagoda in Discord said that he is going to sign up for Desert Financial Credit Union this weekend because he said, you know what? If it's good enough for Craig, it's probably good enough for me. And he's absolutely right. Desert Financial Credit Union has been around for more than 84 years. They're super trusted. They're the they're, they're largest credit union in Arizona, um, and they have checkings account, savings account, mortgages, loan, credit card, investment options, and more. So anything you need from a bank. And right now, when you open a free checking account online, you can get $200 in bonuses. Get started by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200. Well, I have to say, I'm so happy that I did not bet on tonight's game, I, yeah. as I did the last game when I hit, when the lines were something that we were excited about. And tonight, I did not bet, and happy for that. But when you do want to bet, you need to bet on the BetMGM Sportsbook app. It's easy to do. Download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on your iOS or Android and visit BetMGM.com. Sign up, deposit at least $5 in your new account. Place a wager of at least $5. And once you place that bet, you'll receive $158 in bonus bets, regardless of the outcome of your wager. And as Aliyah explained yesterday, 158 is because it is Super Bowl 58 that none of us would know because we're still using Roman numerals in 2024. I know. What the heck? Figure that out. It, it, yeah. If, once if, you get past 10, if they the said X, it's it. Super Bowl XLVI, yeah, I would say, yeah, it. sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure that's we don't the know that is. So I'm glad they said 58. <laughs> yeah. Sign up. Use bonus code PHNX. Place your first bet in the sports book. Again, wager at least $5. You receive $150 instant winnings regardless of your outcome. Check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to our friend Shane talk about the disclaimer. 
Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico, in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. PD, we talked about the lines changing after a win, and normally it's after a loss that you want to see things change. Um, and it's unfortunate because things were clicking so well in that Boston game. But now you look down the lineup, um, Kirkland goes back to Tucson. Dylan Gunther earned another game with the team. And as Craig mentioned in his practice report earlier today, it seems like it's going to be, you know, a game by game evaluation for Dylan Gunther. Obviously, he wasn't on the score sheet tonight, but did you notice anything from him? Well, he, he, he's bad? minus one. Minus minus one with two penalties, so he sat in the box for four minutes. He only played twelve minutes tonight, um, and he he still delivered pucks to the net. He he ends up with with two shots on net, five attempts. Um, it was okay. Yeah, you know, you, you saw the chemistry between he, he and Cooley the other night. But the problem is, by the time that they 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 get their legs underneath them and you're into the game, you're down three nothing, and it's hard yeah. to evaluate players when you're down like that. Because now here's what happens: you have to chase the lead, which means you have to take chances that you normally don't take. You have to make plays you normally don't make because you're behind. And I I don't know if tonight's a really good fair evaluation for Dylan Gunther. I think the penalties take away a little bit from what he uh, he gave us in, in, in the gave this team in the first few few games but i don't know if you can evaluate anybody tonight i i, I thought the the nice play that that cooley made on the given goal with keller to get that first goal um or the second goal excuse me was really good and i thought that was the highlight play of the of the night was yeah. cooley's pass but beyond that i, I don't know if i mean Kraus again uh, for for several games not he's the guy yeah, um, but even is. with Keller, even with Keller, like it's a great goal and he had opportunities throughout the game and he made a great place play to Schmaltz and um, his turnover set the tone of the game and yeah. he, he can't do that. And, and I've, I've watched it and I know we broke it down in the PD's puck talk in the way that that play that he should have made that passing play up top, I think, but, but you look at it again and there's other options. He can go down low and then he can drive the net and get a give and go down low. The only thing he probably shouldn't have done is, is taken his ice away. And, and so I was really disappointed in that he wasn't, if, if you make a mistake that 20 seconds in, I don't know if you're ready to play. And, and Clayton Keller is the four time all-star and he's driving this bus. And, and I talk about him being a captain on the team because I think he deserves it. Um, he, he's got to be ready to play when the puck drops and he needs to make a better play there. And that hurt his team. And so I, I, I'm, I'm frustrated with him. He, he, it's these moments when he has to take a step forward. He's, he's he, offensively, he's been great, but those are the moments that you have to show your team, Hey, this is how we're going to play tonight. And so, you know, I, I'm a little disappointed in, in his, his start. So there's nobody on this team, maybe Kraus, Ingram, maybe Boogie. Yeah. Because it's always Boogie. And I do want to acknowledge Kraus because um, I, I felt like we gave him some flowers last game for his effort. Um, but what I liked from Kraus tonight, obviously, besides scoring a goal, um, when Michelli got hit in front of the net, kind of blatantly cross-checked and that didn't get called in front of the net in the second period, Kraus kind of, he stood up for Michelli. You know, he, he threw hands. You've seen him have that anger, shouting on the ice, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. I like to see that. I like to see a guy stand up for his teammate in that way, and he's not necessarily, like, dropping the gloves in dramatic fashion, but he just he didn't like to see that, and he stood up for him, and I like that. And we talk about team leadership. He's one of those guys for sure. Yeah, and that's, that's the kind of physicality you want from him, and we've said that before. When he plays with that little bit of an edge, he becomes a different player, and, and I think he has shown that over the last few games. And you know what? More this season than I've ever seen from him where he's got that little bit of a bite to his game, and, and I hope that continues because if he plays like that at his size and his skill level and his ability to create offense, um, he's, a, he's a very, very good player. And, and I, I will say on a brighter note, I wish – that I, I maybe before after Craig comes on, I'll have to show you. We were talking about the, the dogs and 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 our pets and all of those things. My dog, who usually does not come out here for the show, he's usually sleeping by now. Um, but but we're home alone, and and he is he is right behind me, and Aww. he is just it's the cutest thing. Crash out. So when Craig leaves, I'll see if we can tilt the camera down. And now that just made me smile and relieve some of my um, post game anxiety. So okay. thanks, Wiley. 
Thank you, Wiley. Well, you've relieved some of your post-game anxiety. It's time for Craig to relieve some of his. So let's bring him in. Hi, guys. Hi. I got no anxiety. Oh, Craig. What about frustrations? Just the job. Um, it's uh, uh, I, I guess more than more than anything, just analyzing this, it's surprising. And that's that's what Andre Turin, you said after this game. He said, surprising. Can't don't understand it. There were he said, "What well, choose whichever adjective you want." They're at a loss to explain it. I mean, they, I'm sure you guys have talked about it already. But for the five games on this homestand, they were out. They they didn't come ready to play. They 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 didn't compete very well. And now you're in one, and it's hard. Listen, Andre said it's on the players. It's on the coaches. Jason Zucker said I was terrible tonight. I I I, I let my teammates down. They all said the right words, but. Whatever, who cares? Their words. Like, how do you allow this to happen after the first three games of this homestand? You saw the formula against Boston. You got to be dialed in from from the drop of the puck. And once again, they were not tonight. I didn't see this one coming, guys. The the first three games of this homestand were against much better teams. The Calgary Flames are not a good team. I'm just going to say that outright. That's not a good team. And they just got blown out in their home building in a critical getaway game before a critical road trip. That one's hard to fathom. And to me, like, you got to make some hard decisions right now. You you need to send some messages as a coaching staff after an effort like this because it's just plain unacceptable from a team to turn in a performance like this. Yeah, and especially, Craig, especially when you're talking about the the opponents, this game, and we said this coming into this trip, or excuse me, this, this homestand, this was the most important game of the five because this is the team that is closest to you in the standings. You had to win this one. This was the one because it's a four-point game. Like yep. Boston, I think, is a good win. It, it, it boosts you emotionally, and all those things are true. Calgary is right there with you. They get two points that you don't get, and you lose those two. It's a four-point game. You needed to get this win, and to have that kind of an effort in the first 10 minutes was just disheartening. The game was over 10 minutes in, and, and you can't have that effort. It, and I, I, I you know what we've talked about. It's effort. It's effort. It's yeah, being ready, yeah. mentally sharp. It's being prepared when the puck drops. And this team didn't do that tonight. Yeah, mentally yeah. sharp is the thing that I don't get. I get, you know, you're, you're right. That That's the thing that stands out to me in this game, to make the mistakes that they made. We, we can start. There are a lot of people we can talk about. Clayton Keller's turnover on the first goal. You're the last guy back. The defenseman's diving into the zone, and you try to pass through two sticks. Boom, it's in the net. You can't make that play. Jason Zucker, who admitted that he screwed up on the second goal, um, Matt Dumba, let's just say it outright, was a hot mess on the ice tonight. And we heard earlier today, you know, and I keep hearing from people that he's coming, he's coming, he's putting it together. And there are parts of his game, of course, it's not all that, but Matt Dumba's making terrible mistakes on the ice that at some point there's got to be accountability for that. And listen, I know people were defending Karelwa Vemelka a little bit tonight, but like the second goal, I don't know what he was doing in terms of technique. The third goal, he just didn't get back to the post. He didn't track the puck. So it, it was stunning to watch the array of mental errors or just lack of focus from the Coyotes in a critical game tonight. So what do they do about it? What do you do more than words at this point? It's almost like th- there needs to be some sort of shakeup. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's changes in the lineup. But something has to happen here. There has to be a bit of a reckoning after an effort like this. You know what's yeah. funny, Craig? I, I, I'll step on Leo one more time because I, this, Leo, I'm sorry, but this this is something in the old days before the the CBA. You know what happened right now, Craig? Somebody get traded. Somebody be gone. And you you I remember when you see Bobby Smith come into a locker room after a few bad games. And you go, oh oh, guys would put their head down in their stalls, going, oh oh, something's happening because you you literally trade guys to shake it up. You can't now because the CBA is way too hard. But that's how you shake it up. Well, I was going to say that um, Jason Demers texted us actually earlier in the night um, and said, Bear needs to right the ship. And that seems to be a sentiment shared by a lot of people in our chat right now. You know, Margaret saying, I think Bear needs to send some messages to guys not playing well. Um, you know, Paul said maybe key players need to be benched. You know, I, I'm not a coach. I don't know what the right coaching philosophy is, but we have seen star players and players get benched in this NHL season around the league. And whether it's benching, whether it's cutting down on minutes or shuffling lines, um, you know, Bear, he's, he's, I think we can all agree that he's a player's coach. He connects well with his players. He, he can snap, he can lose it for sure. Um, but going one and four at mullet, just 
that does not sit right with me at all. And now you're heading out on a road trip where you're playing Minnesota next. So it's a huge central division matchup. You're playing somebody who is close to you in the standings. They have another chance at Calgary. They play Vancouver, who is one of the hottest teams in the league. Like we thought Boston was the get right game. And that would be like, honestly, after Boston, I thought, okay, like those three games, that was tough, but they got this, they got the next game. They're going to go into Minnesota and potentially win or go to overtime or whatever. And it's fine, but now it doesn't feel fine. And something feels like it needs to shift. As long as you reference the JD text, I thought he brought up an important point that we've talked about before. And Andre has said this himself. This is the easy part, establishing culture, you know, exceeding expectations. It's He has said it himself. When there are any kind of expectations, that's when you really find out about yourself. It's when you find out about a coaching staff too, right? It, it, the rebuild is one thing, right? You're stripping it down. You're just trying to establish hard play and all those things. Well, well, what happens now when there is a little bit of expectation around the Coyotes to at least stay in the playoff picture? What's the coaching staff going to do now? This is a test not only of the players, this is a test of the staff now. One of the few that they've had on this in this regard, but it is a test for this coaching staff right now to see how they handle this. Yeah, it is, Craig. And I, I, we, we talked about before you came on is what do they do tomorrow before they get on a one o'clock flight? Do they get, yeah. they responded from a hard practice the other day. Do you put them on the ice at 10 a.m. tomorrow before you go? I, in my mind, again, it's, I've been in coach's room and the GM right now, and this is a different time, a different era, different people. And this is not today's staff, but they would, there is no question that this team would be skating tomorrow. One and four on a homestand losing like this at home. I don't care if we push the flight back an hour. And that's what the head coach would say. Well, we'll fly at two. We'll fly at three, but we're going on the ice because that's not good enough. And we got to get better. And the only way to do that is to hit the ice. Now I'm not saying that you can do that all the time. And I'm not sure if this, that this era of hockey can handle that right now, if players would turn on you, but, but I know that would have been the response before the, Craig, the only thing you can do to a player is limit his ice time. That's it. That's it. That's the only weapon a coach has to limit his ice time. And, and the, to do that, I think there is, you may have to blow up the lines again. You may have to. Yeah. I mean, you and you can do something on the deep pairs too. You've got a, you've got extra defensemen. I listen, Josh Brown hasn't played in a month. And do you think he reason, wants to play? Yeah. I think he should be back in the lineup. I think Yusuf Alamaki should be back in the lineup. Quite frankly, quite frankly, Matt Dumba probably needs to sit for a little bit to, to, reset and figure things out because he can't be making the kind of mistakes he's making as a veteran right now. And, and listen, again, they're defending him. I don't buy it. I, I think that's just defending a, a really good guy and, you know, being a player's coach, but we can all see what's happening. So they need to make some changes right now. I wanted to ask you about another thing tonight. Like I, I got to admit, I was surprised that Karel Vimelko was starting this game after Connor Ingram's performance against the Bruins. Wondering what you guys think about that. Go ahead, PD. I, I, you know what? The only thing I can think of, Craig, is is the only way we've seen a goalie go more than one is, is when they started off the streak with a shutout. And maybe he needed to shut out the Boston Bruins. I, I don't know. It kind of goes back to what we were saying, though. Uh, before all of this happened with the goalies, we go back to game 20 when they're still alternating. It was when one guy gets hot, we're going to ride that guy. Well, I don't think he did. Because we, we we were on this show a week ago talking about Connor Ingram being a dark horse for the All-Star game. So clearly in our minds, we're thinking he's, the, the at least to this point in the season, he's been the better goalie. So yeah, I, I think he followed up. You do you follow up that performance? And, and here's one other thing. Not just that, but this team, like it or not, they give more run support and they play better defensively when Connor Ingram's in the net. Now, why is that? I don't know but it is just reality. They get more goals when Ingram's in the net and they defend better when he's in the net. So he it was an important comment. game too, PD. It was such an important game. The, the decision surprised me from that standpoint as well. And I was yeah. surprised. I mentioned this earlier, Craig, that they didn't pull veggie after the third goal. Mm -hmm. Like, did yeah. you ask him about that? No, we didn't. We didn't ask about that. There's some things that I want to, dive into more at the practice, which I assume that they're having. I've been told that they're having, um, you know, the post game scrums are unfortunately they are what they are. Yeah. They're, they're not, they're not the time for in-depth conversations, but yeah, that, that was a surprise to me as well, because I, I just talked about the goals that he gave up, like not tracking the puck and getting back to the post. I mean, that wasn't, there's just no excuse for that. Like he was just slow getting back to his post. You're, you're not dialed into the game. That's, that's what that tells me. 
And because of that, the, 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 how close in proximity those the, the second and the third goal came, it's again, you talked about the importance of this game. And, and does the season ride on it? Yeah, you know what? It might. So at that point, after that goal, is, is it one of those moments, a rare moment in hockey where you actually use your timeout and go, oh my gosh, we need a reset right now. Let's call the timeout. Yeah. Let's make the goalie change in the timeout. And let's, let's, I'm going to give a piece of my mind to the guys on the bench and I'm going to tell them what I feel. And I'm going to say, okay, who's going to be a leader? Who's going to dig us out of this? I'd give a little bit of a speech. And I said, you, I point down to the milk and I said, look what you did to that guy. You gave him no support. You did nothing for him. Not his fault. You guys, what are you going to do to make up for it? And that didn't happen. And then you wait till, till it's, you know, it's four. So I, yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's, and again, it's easy to point fingers now, but this game was so important. So important. There is no excuse for the team not to be ready at the drop of the puck at the 20 minute mark. There is none. They have to be ready. I don't care what you need to do, but they need to be ready to play at the beginning of the first period. And they weren't. Let's talk about that because there's, there's this old narrative that it's the coach's responsibility to have his guys ready to play. And I do believe that the coach bears some responsibility, but to me, a lot of it also falls on the leadership, the guys in the room before the game. They have to have this team ready. And that's why, quite frankly, I requested Jason Zucker and Clayton Keller after this game because those are supposed to be two leaders of this team, and they didn't have this team ready to play. Yeah, it's funny. The, the responsibility to prepare the game plan on the opponent you're going to play is on the coaching staff, period. That they, the, the game plan, how you're going to beat that team, what are their strengths and weaknesses, and how is our system going to going to beat that system that they're playing? Um, to prepare for a game and be be motivated, in my opinion, that comes inside the room. That that's the guys sitting across from you and next to you in the locker room. The accountability has to be from the players within the room. And and when you get to a, a group of winning players, when you get a locker room that wins. The guy next to you is the guy that's going to say, hey, that's not good enough. You need to be better to the point that they're yelling at them. And and and, and I know the guy was yelling at success. Mosier on the bed or on the ice. Did you see that? I did. Yeah. And did you see why? No. Because he didn't pass on the puck. Oh. He, he wanted the one, he was set up for the one time with two seconds to go in the second period. He wanted it. And he, he was wound up and he had a, he was actually a pretty good look and he probably had an empty net if, if Mosher slides it to him, but he's got to do it in the room and you got to, you know, it's that who's, who's doing the closed door meetings on this team. And and I can go back to the time of Kachuk and Rona can talk it. Do you think those locker rooms stood up and called guys out? Do you think Brad Richardson got up in 2012 and, and, and told the guy, Hey, that's not good enough. Well, well Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I I don't know who's doing that in this room, but that being ready to play mentally prepared and motivationally prepared, the coach can say, hey, all the rah-rah stuff and the little notes on the locker room wall, fine. But you have to have that motivation internally, and it's got to happen inside the room. Yeah. We're going to digest this one more and talk more about this um, on tomorrow's show at 2 p.m. because we're going to preview Minnesota. We're going to talk more about Matt Dumba um, and hopefully have some other takeaways from practice. But, Craig, before we let you go tonight, or is there anything else you want to say or uh, <laughs> have we said it all for now? Well, I, I'm sure you guys already talked about it, but it's just notable Dylan Gunther is still here. We, we probably haven't explored that enough. And I, I know a lot of people – maybe jumping to the conclusion that Dylan Gunther is going to be here for the rest of the season. He may, he may, but when Petey and I talked to Andre earlier today, he, he did say, you know, I, I understand some of the reasons why the development staff and the management still think there's room for work. Um, he likes, he thinks Dylan's a very responsible player. He likes all that stuff, but there are areas of his game where he still needs work. He, he played very well in those first two games. It's hard to judge anyone off of tonight's game. Um, but this is going to be a daily evaluation, right? You don't you don't decide you don't make that big decision based off two or three games. You want to get a handful of games and see how he responds. See what happens when the adrenaline of this call up wears off and it's just the daily grind of the NHL schedule. See how he responds then. All signs are good right now for Dylan Gunther, but don't jump to the conclusion that he's made it because that's not the case yet. I, I guess that's what I would say about that. Also tough to see Justin Kirkland go down. He probably knew it. He knows his role. But after that emotional story um, and, you know, his breakdown in the locker room after his first game back in the NHL in a year, it, it's tough to see a guy have to go back to Tucson. Yeah. And speaking of Tucson, PD sat down with head coach Steve Potvin down there uh, for a extensive interview that is 
honestly, probably like he, Steve Poppin is the definition of friend of the program. I think he and Bill He's Armstrong amazing. are neck and neck in appearances on the show. Um, this was a fabulous interview. I listened to the whole thing today. Um, so we'll be dropping that shortly or tomorrow this weekend sometime. We'll let you know. Uh, but we're going to play a clip of that on tomorrow's show because we actually are going to be focusing on the Tucson Roadrunners tomorrow. It feels like it's been a while since we've talked about them. So we'll talk about the Roadrunners um, here from Potvin a little bit. And then that whole Potvin interview, it's 37 minutes, will be available on an audio-only episode. So you have to make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts uh, to listen to that one. But I promise you it's worth your time. It's such a good interview. So he talks about Gunther, um, Doan, the team, Vialta, Soderstrom, and, and much more. So look forward to that for sure. All right. Well, Craig, we will see you on that show tomorrow. And uh, if there's a practice, I'm sure we will have plenty to talk about from that as well. But we will let you get out of here and we'll see you tomorrow. All right. I'm going to go see if I can chase down Andre Turigny wearing full leathers on his motorcycle right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He see needs to clear his head on the, on the open exactly. road after this one. <laughs> yeah, seriously. He really does. Oh, All right, boy. guys. All right. See you Bye, tomorrow. Craig. Oh, man. If you don't know what Craig's talking about, um, episode two of Bare Necessities dropped earlier this week. You can find it on our YouTube channel. Uh, Andre Turney has a passion for motorcycles, if you didn't know. And he gets into it with Craig in depth. Um, so that video, like I mentioned, is up on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. He talked about, you know, liking to cl- clear his head when he's out on his bike. And it's better for everybody in his life. And I'm sure, you know, he might be wanting to go for a motorcycle ride either late tonight or Early tomorrow morning, we will see. But, PD, this is the kind of game that you want to take an OGs after. It just is. Um, this was a tough one. Oh, my gosh. are we? Is this Wiley Cam right now? What is happening? Okay. I'll just continue. Oh, look at him back there. Hey, buddies. Zonked. Love it. Anywho, I'm going to be like that later when I take my uh, my OG's little sleep, sleep edition gummies yeah, for my dog. I was uh actually I have the the Indica minis. It's all in the cream flavors. They're right now they're in my bedroom. They're calling my name. Um they all uh, OG's has the sativa as well as and they also just launched a new vegan gummy and the big OG's, which is a mega version of the Pegs Raspberry Orange RSO. Um, it's 100 milligrams in 10 slices with 10 milligrams THC each. So, you know, there's a scale. You can start with the minis and you can go to the mega and you can find your happy medium somewhere in the middle. But to learn more about OG's gummies and where you can find them, head on over to ogsbrands.com. And when you're also riding your motorcycle around, the other thing you need to do is you need to stop and fill up for gas and do it at your local Circle K. But before you do that, make sure you download and sign up for the Inner Circle Rewards. And it's easy to do. Just download the Circle K app and you will get 25 cents off your first five fill-ups and three cents off every fill-up after that. There's all kinds of free stuff when you're part of the Inner Circle, whether it's snacks or drinks. Just check it out on the Circle K app. So download it today. Join the Inner Circle for free. Download the Circle K app. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. And the gummies have worn off. I don't know if you just heard Wiley. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, he's up and at him now. Uh oh. I, I woke him fun... up when I said, "Hey, buddy." <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be an interesting. <laughs> a okay. lot of lot of fingers on the mute button. Oh. It's all good. All right. Uh, well, we just got this text from Craig, which I thought I would. Uh, share because I was about to look at the standings next. Um, Craig said when this homestand began, the Coyotes were in the final wild card spot. They had a better points percentage than the wild card spot holder, uh, the first wild card spot holder, Nashville, and had a three point lead on Edmonton. They are now ahead of just four teams in the Western Conference, and one of them is their next opponent, Minnesota. Meanwhile, Edmonton has won nine straight, Seattle has won eight straight, and Calgary, St. Louis, Seattle, and Edmonton have all passed the Coyotes in the Western Conference standings. That's the importance of this game tonight. Yeah, and that's, that's the, the you importance. come into the homestand. The homestand, you come into these five home games and you figure that they're going to at least hold serve and, and not... Call it magic. Where'd it go? I don't know. The magician is not happy. Okay, Petey, I was on LinkedIn earlier. I'm getting a little concerned because I saw this. The mullet magician is looking no. for work. 
No. He's, no. He's looking for work. Like, he had his <laughs> one gig with Boston, but that's just not enough to pay the bills in this industry. So he's out there looking. He's in, he's in need. And you know what's more impressive? I don't know what's more impressive that Sean DePaz is a connection to the to to the <laughs> mullet magician, or that the mullet magician got his early education at Hogwarts. I, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what's more impressive. <laughs> <laughs> wow, poor guy. He's he's. You never know. He might turn up. I don't know. You never know. But PD, the the Coyotes are now six in the Central Division with just Minnesota and Chicago behind them which highlights the importance of Saturday's game against Minnesota which we'll dive more into tomorrow um, and in the wild card in the west I mean they're now six where they were holding steady at that second wild card even we're in the first wild card for a bit there and it's funny because it's really it's only a three-point difference between them and the first wild card team Edmonton and Nashville they also have the same number of points but Edmonton does have two games in hand but you just look down that list and that the way the Western Conference is right now, like San Jose, Chicago, Anaheim, they're out of it. But everybody else from Edmonton to Minnesota is in it. And every game matters. And you have to win the games that you have to win. For the Coyotes, it's a home game against the Calgary Flames. You got to win it. Yeah, and, and that you still, I guess, fortunately, you're still kind of in that mix, but there you cannot let any more games slip away. And you talk about the Minnesota and Calgary games coming up on this trip. You have to get those points, and you have to make up the points that you you lost tonight to Calgary. You have to beat them in Calgary. And, and I hate to say this, but if you come back from this road trip 0-3, and now that means you've won one of your last eight, uh, the playoffs are a distant memory. I, I just don't see any way that they can climb back in if you drop three straight on this road trip. So they're going to have to find a way to get points, and it's going to have to start with Minnesota on the next one. Yeah. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule just so we can see what the Coyotes have uh, to overcome here. Minnesota, like we mentioned, on Saturday. And then they have a chance for revenge against Calgary, this time in Calgary. So that's going to be a big one. Can they steal those two points back? Vancouver, I mean, they're one of the hottest teams in the league and have been all season long. That's going to be a huge test. And then Nashville. I mean, you, you come home and you're against Nashville, but Nashville is that team right now in the second wild card spot. So these are huge West matchups. I mean, the game against Vancouver, you're not gaining anything on them, but you're other than points for yourself in that in that tight race down there. But the other three teams, I mean, those are become must wins. Yeah, it, it, it's funny when we saw the schedule a couple of weeks ago, and you had a, you know the five Stanley Cup champions back to back to back to back to back you go uh oh this is going to be a tough part of the schedule and then you went all five and, and now you look at this schedule and you go okay these are important games you have to find a way to get up and win these games and then they just don't and, and not only do you not win they're not even other than the boston games the games aren't even close like six two is not close and you look at the games you're you're losing you just it's it's three not or more goals every single one every loss yeah. on this homestand was three or more it wasn't two one it wasn't three two it wasn't four three like that's what no. makes it even more frustrating and when you're talking about winnipeg that came in here and what it's been th they haven't given up uh, uh more than two goals a game in their last three more or something three. And, yeah it's three it's ridiculous and yeah. this team does it for the last five yeah it's not good. And, and again, so I, I want to reel everybody back, including myself. Coming into this season, the expectations were not playoffs. Coming into this season, the expectations were to take a step forward from where this team was a year ago to play meaningful games in this season, and they have done that. Yes. They held the playoff spot for the first three months of the season, which we didn't expect them to do. This was a huge step forward and a huge part of the rebuild. It's a step forward. So let's take that into account. The frustration comes in is they've you've seen the bar get set higher because they've performed well enough to be in the playoff position. And that's where I think the disappointment lies is you've seen, you know that this team can perform better. And when they don't, you're disappointed. If you said coming into the season after game, whatever this is tonight, after game 39, 40, that this is where they'd be in the standings. You go, okay, that's, that's pretty good. The problem is, is where they've been in the last few weeks. And I think that's the frustrating level for all of us that are watching is, is this team can be better than that. They can provide more offense. They can defend better. The goaltending can be better. And I think that's why the frustration is there. Yeah, that and like, I guess a little bit of the effort as well. And even last year when this team finished sixth last and, you know, weren't great night in, night out, 
they still showed a lot of fight. Um, and that's the thing I think that that's really disappointing with these multi-goal losses, because when it's, you're only losing by one or two, you can, you know, argue that the effort was there. I mean, some, some, some nights it just doesn't go your way. Um, your goalie can have an off night, whatever it may be. You can even make the argument that the first period tonight was that, but we've also seen this team come back from three goal deficits twice this season. And it's funny because here at downtown in our office, like we believe that like the sun's crew is here. They were having a lot of fun tonight. They were laughing and giggling earlier. Um, kind of jealous but that's fine and flex like flex was saying they've done it before like they're gonna do it again and i believed it i was ready like they can do it and they just didn't and they never really even came close and that's that's disappointing yeah and it is funny i when it was three nothing i said oh this one's over and then all of a sudden then Kraus scores and you go oh, wait a minute this team's done this before maybe they can come back and it i i did have a little glimmer of hope and they they set me up and teased me with with hope because they just didn't have that tonight but you're right and that that's another one of the positives that this team has been able to come from behind and and amass three goal deficits twice so never say never i guess but it just wasn't to be tonight it was not um let's take a look at the punch card and this line it's not off to a good start this is the most losses to start a line this season, they are three and one on this line, um, so not great. But we could, if with a win on Saturday, we could get a connect five. So there's always hope on the horizon, PD. Yeah. The next game is the halfway point. It is unbelievable we're at the halfway point. We're going to celebrate after that Minnesota game for sure. I yeah. will believe me. And by the way, there's a group in our Discord that is actually going to the game in Minnesota. No way. That. Yeah, there's That's a Wisconsinite. Awesome. Wisconsin. I didn't know there was, was a Wisconsinite in in our um, Discord, but they are taking a group to uh, XL Energy Center in St. Paul, and it's going to be That's a little awesome. chilly. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So wow. good, good for our diehards. Way well, to go, diehards. Thank you. Yeah, we love to have Coyotes fans represented at all of the games. And there's also a group of Coyotes fans and our diehards who did a little pregame meetup at Four Peaks. Um, sorry I couldn't make it. They did invite me. I appreciate you guys a lot. Um, Christina heard heard um, zombie at Four Peaks, thought it was a sign. I also thought it was a sign, uh, but maybe for another day, Christina. But anywho, Four Peaks, listen, that was a Four Peaks was needed tonight. A Four Peaks might be needed later tonight. Um, and if you're going to go watch a 6-2 loss in person, at least you went to Four Peaks beforehand. Um, so... <laughs> listen four peaks you can buy them wherever you buy your beer and if you've never been to the a treat pub like our diehards were tonight check them out so much on tap they have extra stuff there that they don't have elsewhere plus the food there is amazing so check out four peaks you can visit fourpeaks.com slash locator to find all your favorite beers and events check out at four peaks brew or at four peaks pub to keep up with the latest at arizona's hometown brewery and you must be 21 or older to drink four peaks please drink responsibly and also in today's, everybody wants to have a, improve their home because it's hard to move these days because it's it's not easy to do. But you know what it is easy to do? It's easy to get new flooring. And there's three words I want to tell you. Easy, quick, convenient. That's Empire Today. It's easy, quick, convenient. They do it in your home. They bring all the samples. You don't have to go back and forth to the store and make all kinds of trips to, to, to get samples to see if they match. They bring everything to you. So it is easy. It's quick. It's convenient. We talk about speed and service. And even when you get something done, the, the, the confidence to know that if it's not done right, they will make it right. And that's what Empire Today does. So if you're looking for new flooring, make sure you... I got to get, see this. I was so good. I was doing so good. Yeah. You're, you were buzzing. <laughs> I was buzzing. Schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners can receive $350 off disc, uh, 350 off discount when they use the promo code PHNX. Restrictions apply. See empiretoday.com dash PHNX for details. Is it midnight yet? It just Flash feels like I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry, Empire Today, for that. I, he, I, I, um, he he came I, out. He was veggie out of the gate. Like yeah. we'll, we'll pull him, pull him on yeah, the ad read. Let me get somebody else in for the ad read. That wasn't good enough. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. it's Sorry. all Sorry. good. It's all good. Um, PD, any final oh. thoughts before we get out of here? Yeah, and I want to leave it with a couple things. I, I think the frustration is that you, you watch this team and you've seen them play better, 
and the frustration is that they're not ready to play. And the frustration is the first periods have continued to be a problem for this team. And you know that these individual players can be better and they can play better as a team. That's the frustration. The good news is, is this is a step in the rebuild and they're going in the right direction. And you see players like Gunther and you see players like Cooley and Michelli, and they're making a difference and they're making an impact on the team today that is really going to carry this team forward um, in the next couple of years. So deep breath. Oh, geez, four peaks, whatever it takes to get you through. And, and we get to do it all over again on Saturday. Yep. Um, or retail therapy. You can grab this amazing crew neck, Arizona versus everybody, or PD's hoodie, PHNX hoodie. We have four hoodies in the locker. We have this crew neck. It's chilly out there for Arizona standards. So a lot of you were wearing this crew neck today. I saw all the pictures in Discord. It makes me very happy. Make sure you grab yours now, phnxlocker.com. And if you're a diehard, you get 20% off. We also have the t-shirt version of this, which you can get for free when you sign up to become a diehard. It's been fun. Um, we've had a few new diehards join this week. So we appreciate you all. Um, and we want everybody watching and listening to become a diehard as well. Um, but be sure to subscribe to the PHNX Sports YouTube channel so you never miss when we go live because it's not just live shows. We have all the extra content as well, such as Bear Necessities, PD's Puck Talk, Walking and Talk, and all of that and more. So subscribe there and be sure to subscribe on audio as well. You don't want to miss the interview with Steve Potvin. That's audio only coming this weekend. So subscribe, Apple, Spotify, all the places you can get your podcasts. Our podcast is there. Um, and lastly, we will be live tomorrow at 2 p.m. to check in down the I-10, hear from Steve Potvin. We'll talk a little bit more about that Minnesota game, Matt Dumpa, and then round it out with some uh, Friday fun day because I think we all need that after this stretch of home games. Um, but in the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter at S. Peters Hockey, at Leah Merrill, at Craig S. Morgan, at Abrica Danielle. You can follow the show at PHNX underscore Coyotes. Thanks so much for listening. Hit the like button on your way out, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday night, and we will see you all tomorrow. We all silly like the mayor.